First, we'll be going through the various products and software that C3.ai provides its customers. First and foremost, they provide AI software, which includes three C3 AI suite, a comprehensive platform for rapidly developing and operating companies to develop AI applications. There are specific pre-built SaaS applications for various specific use cases that provide companies a lot of benefit. Third, a C3.AI CRM, customer relationship management system for various specific industries. And we'll go over through the various industries that the company is targeting. And then lastly, for companies that might not be able to have as much money to invest in artificial intelligence. They have low code and no code out analytics for various data sciences for different companies. With regards to industries, we can see the industries span through the spectrum, manufacturing, retail, telecommunications, smart cities, transportation, aerospace and defense, healthcare, etc. So they're not boxing themselves into one specific industry or one specific niche. They're really trying to create artificial, artificial intelligence solutions for all industries and for all types of companies. Next, we can see some of their customers here. You can see US Air Force. We saw Shell right there. We saw Baker Hughes, Con Edison, Raytheon, 3M. So these are a lot of big companies that are using their applications and their software. And it's only going to expand and more Fortune 500 companies in the semiconductor space, technology, and some of the other industries that I mentioned, healthcare, smart cities, transportation, etc. will be using their software applications. Next, we'll be going through leadership. I always try to focus on the CEO because that's the person who is driving the company. In many cases where companies don't do well, the CEO, it was either their first time trying to take a company successfully through product development and expansion and growth, or they were successful in a specific niche area at one company and then they tried to expand and do that same thing as a CEO at another company and it just doesn't work. So always trying to focus on the CEO and seeing their experience and what they have done in the past. We can hear, see here, Thomas Siebel, chairman and executive officer. He previously was at Siebel Systems, which got acquired by Oracle Corporation in 2006, up to 2 billion in revenue, how he scaled the company, 8,000 employees, 29 countries, 4,500 corporate customers and revenue of above $2 billion. So we know that he has a track record of taking a company, scaling a company, being able to target enterprise customers, etc. And this is exactly what they need with C3.ai. And in addition to that, they have a lot of very intelligent employees at the company. They're are recruiting some of the best talent around the world in order to be able to implement these software applications and develop the further develop the tools that they're bringing to the market for all the companies and all the industries that we talked about. The company went IPO last year. We can just see here, click on Max. We can see that they went IPO and they IPO at $92 a share. Currently, they're trading at $66 a share. We can see that the high since they IPO'd was $177 a share. So a lot of room for expansion. It was very highly priced at $177 a share. This was with just the market in general being really high in the December to February timeframe. And then now it's scaled back as the markets regressed a little bit when it came to tech companies and speculative stocks as well as SPACs. So now it's at $66 a share, but we're always doing our due diligence and trying to find companies. And this is a company that's come on our radar in order to be able to pounce on the low price point and be able to potentially grow our wealth along with the company's growth. So next going to the financials, I like looking at the financials. People always say fundamentals are dead. It's all about growth and what potentially the company can do. However, most of the successful companies that you'll see, the Apples, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Amazons, they do have the fundamentals. They do have the numbers to back their valuations. There are certain exceptions. For example, Tesla, it's a lot baked in as far as their potential. However, they do, they are rapidly expanding. Their sales are growing year over year, etc. So they do have some of the fundamentals in there in addition to the potential growth that they will see in the future. With regards to the income statement, we can see that the company's revenue has grown year over year from 2019 to 2020. It's increased from 91 
million dollars, 256 million dollars. Their gross profit is amazing at 75%. That's what we would like to see for a software SaaS company, 75% gross profit. One thing people will point out is that their net income they don't have a net income, they're losing money. So net loss of $69 million in 2020 and 33 million in 2019. However, one thing that we wanna point out, like we talked about in the 100 baggers video, how much money are they investing in research and development? And looking here, they're investing $64 million and $37 million in the last two years. And we can see that's basically what their net loss was for the year. So if they had invested nothing on research and development and just kept selling their product, they would be potentially close or near break even for the year. So this tells us that they're investing for the future. They're going to further develop their products and they're heavily investing in research and development. And that's what we want to see with growth companies, developing research and development to further products, to be able to expand and to be able to provide more applications for their customers. From a balance sheet perspective, they recently went IPO. So I would expect that they have a lot of cash. So just looking at their total assets for 30, 2020 cash of $244 million. So they're, they're in a high cash position. Their liabilities do look a little high. Take a look at this. They have a lot of preferred securities or outside debt. So $375 million there, which is pretty significant. That's something we would want to further look into. However, it just looks like their preferred securities outside stock equity. Um, so this potentially convertible debt, it's either money that they could pay back to those people who invested or it could potentially turn into equity. Lastly, we want to go into the statement of cash flows. We're going to expect that the company is not generating cash flows. They're using up money in operations, which is 34 and 61 million. Again, that's basically all the money they're investing in research and development. That's a great investment of capital. So we're happy that they're doing so and we want them to continue to do so, so that they can continue to grow the company. Overall, the financials look great. The liabilities are a little bit high. However, it does look like it's convertible debt, which could potentially be equity. It might dilute shareholders a little bit. However, it's necessary as they're continuing to expand because they need the cash from the investors. The artificial intelligence space is definitely something that's competitive. It's a new landscape. There's a lot of companies coming out trying to develop various applications for customers, for enterprise solutions, etc. C3.ai is one of the leaders within the space, and it's definitely a company that you want to do your due diligence on and potentially invest in your portfolio. It's a company that I've included in my portfolio and will continue to expand my position in C3.ai. It could potentially be a game changer in the industry. Current valuation is $6 billion. And if it becomes the leading company within the artificial intelligence space and solutions for artificial intelligence, like many other SaaS companies, it could easily be at a hundred billion valuation, 200 billion, etc. It'll continue to grow. The profit margins are amazing. It'll continue to generate more profits as the company expands its customer base and continues to grow its revenue. And in addition, it continues to innovate as it's investing heavily in research and development, as we've seen with some of the previous growth companies such as Amazon, Tesla. So this is a company that's positioned greatly to do well. This is a company that's positioned to do extremely well in the future and you don't want to miss out and you want to make sure you're, this is a company that's positioned to do extremely well and continue to grow over the years. So make sure you don't miss out, do your due diligence and potentially include this in your portfolio. As always, make money, enjoy life, peace.